Hey everyone, so in today's video we're going to be talking about the most common chemical reactions in organic chemistry, particularly our AS level content. When we talk about chemical reactions, there are multiple kinds of those, but there are three reactions that we will keep facing again and again. First of these is the substitution reaction. There's a reaction known as substitution reaction. Another is the addition reaction and a third category is the opposite of addition which we call as the elimination reaction. In addition reaction what happens is that one chemical species or you can say one chemical group one chemical group substitutes for the another substitutes for another generally for example if a was having a bond with b c hops in c wants to make a bond what happens is that a then makes a bond with c and then b has to be left alone that is substitution reaction a very common example that you might have studied in o level chemistry is that when a methane molecule with four covalent bonds, one bond with each hydrogen, reacts with a chlorine molecule which has two halogen atoms. Let's highlight them both with different colors, so both chlorine atoms, yellow and green. When they react together with each other, one of the chlorine atom substitutes for a hydrogen atom. So what happens is that three hydrogens will still be in place but the fourth hydrogen is apparently substituted by a chlorine atom. What about the hydrogen atom? Where does it go? It bonds with the remaining chlorine atom. Let's highlight it with green. So basically one of the chlorines is substituting for hydrogen. That's substitution reaction. In addition reaction a double or you can say triple bond breaks down why am I not saying carbon carbon because there are double or triple bonds between oxygen atoms between oxygen and carbon between carbon and nitrogen so any kind of double or triple bond breaks down and new groups add in. In your main reaction new groups are added in. In elimination reaction the opposite happens. So what happens is two chemical groups leave the molecule two groups leave the molecule and a double or you can say triple bond is made. Triple bond is made. Let's have an example over here. For example, you had a ethene molecule with two carbon atoms having double covalent bond between them. When you add H2O, which is steam, to react with the ethene molecule, what happens is that the carbon-carbon double bond is broken down. One of the carbon which had the double bond receives the H. Let's highlight the H with yellow and the OH with green. So one of the carbon receives the H while the other carbon receives OH. This is a addition reaction. The opposite of this would have been elimination. So in the opposite, the H and OH would be going away and you would be getting a team. You would be getting a carbon-carbon double bond. So these are the three main categories of organic reactions. Let's introduce two more definitions to help us understand how bonds are generally activated for reaction. So, we'll talk about 
bond breaking in organic chemistry you might ask yourselves why is it such a big topic matlab why are we giving extra attention to bond breaking because we'll have new types of mechanisms introduced here when a bond is made between two atoms for example a is having a bond with another atom of a let's imagine that both of these are group 7 atoms so both of them had seven electrons in their large shell and they were sharing an electron pair like this the dot and cross diagram looks like this both are halogen atoms so let's say a belongs in group 17 or you can say group 7 based on the o level syllabus if a wants to break the bond with the another atom a most common category over here is homolytic bond fission we call it the homolytic bond fission the word homo means same the word lytic means break down so what happens is that both atoms break their bond in a way that both atoms will receive one electron each they will get their own electron from the bond pair and none of them will become positive or negative a will receive the cross that it had in the bond pair a will get seven electrons in the last shell like it had exactly the way it had in the beginning and b will also receive one electron of its own self which was involved in the bonding previously both of them are highly reactive atoms now and we will call them free radicals we call them free radicals they have odd number of electrons or you can say unpaired electron you can see a has an unpaired electron and b also has an unpaired electron these are unpaired electrons in their p orbital and we know unpaired electrons are really really unstable they want to make a bond so what happens here is a homolytic bond fission how do we show this we show this using half headed arrow a had a covalent bond with another atom of a a wanted to make unpaired um electron having species we call them free radicals so what happens is a gets one electron the other atom receives another electron the arrow of this sort the arrow that i'm drawing on the left over here it's called half headed arrow it means that both the atoms are receiving one electron each they both are they both are free radicals the dot means the unpaired electrons they are not becoming positive or negative the dot refers to the dot means unpaired electron they are called free radicals so over here none of the atoms is becoming a cation or anion they are becoming free radicals which means only unpaired electron is with them the second category of bond breaking we have is the heterolytic bond fission the word hetero means different and we know the word lytic means breaking down so what happens here is we have two atoms from different electronegativity values let's say let's say let's say there was a hydrogen atom making a bond with a chlorine atom the bond pair is between them the rest of the crosses around chlorine atom represent the lone pairs of the chlorine's outermost shell 
So there's a bond between HCl. We know the chlorine atom is highly electronegative. Chlorine is highly electronegative. So chlorine atom already has a partial negative charge and hydrogen atom has a partial positive charge. There's a dipole. When they want to break the bond, they will break it unequally. Chlorine will receive the whole bond pair. It would be unjust with the hydrogen we know, but chlorine receives the bond entirely for itself. There's an arrow from the center. The arrow is from the center of the bond, which means the bond pair. So the arrow is strictly from the center, not from the hydrogen, from the center of bond and to the chlorine atom. What do we get? We get the hydrogen ion because hydrogen literally has no electrons right now. So hydrogen makes a positive ion right now. What happens to the chlorine? The chlorine makes a chloride ion here. So you will get the chloride ion here. The lone pairs are still there. The seventh electron of chlorine is still here and the dot represents the stolen electron, the snatched electron from the hydrogen atom which has now become the ion. This is the chloride negative ion. So in this case what happens is that the bond splits heterolytically and hydrogen makes hydrogen ion and you get a chloride ion. These are not called radicals, these are ions and remember we are also introducing two new definitions here. Hydrogen is a positive ion. Hydrogen will attract electrons because hydrogen has no electrons around it. Any chemical species that attracts electrons is known as electrophile. So all the positive species in organic chemistry are called electrophile. The word electro comes from electrons and the word file means attraction or you can say attracting. So hydrogen ions are called electrophile or any positive ion is called electrophile because it will attract electrons. While chloride is a negative ion, it will attract positive charge because chloride is negative itself so it will attract positive charge. Nucleus generally has protons which has positive charge right? So all chloride or negative ions which obviously attract positive charge are known as nucleophiles. What do we mean by nucleophile? The word nucleo means positive because nucleus is positive. The reason is that nucleus is the positive part of the atomic structure. Nucleus is positive so that's why nucleo is positive and file means attracting. So here after the heterolytic bond fission you don't get two radicals rather you get an electrophile and a nucleophile. Let's recall what we did today. We talked about the chemical reactions in organic chemistry. Substitution means one of the chemical groups will be substituted by the other. The addition reaction means a double or a triple bond breaks down and two new groups join in. In elimination reactions two groups leave and then you get a double or a triple bond. We talked about bond breaking process which is homolytic bond fission where the bond breaks down homolytically equally both atoms receive unpaired electron and both become free radicals. We use half headed arrows here and the second category is the heterolytic bond fission where one atom receives the overall bond pair while the other atom receives nothing. The positive ion is called the electrophile and the negative ion is called the nucleophile. We use the proper complete arrow here. I hope these ideas are clear to us because in the next video we'll use them. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.